Hello friends, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the microservices built especially for the e-commerce application. There will be four microservices dedicated for this application and each does its own work and we will eventually use this for our Kubernetes and Docker Compose. So without delay, come let's get started. So the e-commerce database design has been released as a separate video. If you haven't take a look, take a look at this video that I'm hovering. And if you want a free SQL Server database, take a look at this video and you'll be able to install and get the lifetime free database. And this is for the learning purpose and for your career development. So let's take a look at the e-commerce application now. So far in my channel, whatever you have seen as a web API or nothing but the microservices, but the only difference is uh, mostly, we will have only one web API which will cover almost the application's uh, complete controller need, right? We will, might have multiple controllers which will support the complete application and so on. But e-commerce application is a bigger one, so we will have many tables, many things to do. Not one web API is sufficient because microservices is what we want. And then in this one, we have developed into four microservices. One is the cart and wish list, one is the order processing products and next one is the user. User microservice will does only the user related information like adding addresses for the user, handling the profiles, user activity logs and all of those things. Product deals only with the product category and all of those things and order deals with users order information and order processing and similarly cart and wishlist will deal with every users, their carts and their wishlist. That's why they're called microservices and generally speaking microservices basically as and when these one of these uh, microservices are in more demand right to consider the amazon uh, website amazon website people will go inside many product and take a look at the products which means uh, there are a lot of possible that a user may, uh, may add their address uh, only one or two times right uh, it's not so many times but compared to number of times they look at the product product is the one which is used more similarly a lot of people place order so order is uh, something that is also used okay now when we talk about microservices these microservices will be deployed as and when they are needed in a uh, in an environment so that's called scalability so we can scale a particular microservices based on the need that's why we have to split this application into multiple microservices okay so we're going to do something different uh, rather than uh, you know studying the same thing again and again but this application is using dotnet framework this application is using dotnet core 8 entity framework 8 now very important thing before i forget dotnet core 8 and entity framework core 8 in order for you to work the first thing that you should do it in your template is you need to come to this web project take a look at this invariant globalization it will be set to true you set this to false and there's a video here you will get this error if you don't do that okay i face this problem and a lot of people are facing problem whoever is using dotnet core 8 and ef8 so if you need any questions you can take a look at this now what we are going to do is this uses the entire application uh, entire architecture basically so we will have the the web business layer and the database layer so we will also use the repository pattern here so i'm going to walk you through only one application and then in the remaining microservice i will tell you what is the extra thing that was added here okay so looking at this microservice okay so what do we have we have something called web and then there are three more libraries class libraries one is service one is data one is core now core will have all the entities all the tables converted into entities here models will have the models that is used in the a web project like we cannot expose these entity directly to the users in the web api that's why we have the custom thing for example this address will have many things like user profile and it will have navigation but address model will have only the properties that is required and then the validation here okay now coming to the data part we will have the repositories 
will have simple repositories, easy to access all of these things. Um, you know, if you have any questions on this web API, go take a look at my existing API that, that will cover uh, in detail of how it is implemented. But this is to go through what we have done so far. So this will have the DB context. DB context, if you look at this, 17 tables are here. And then all the database, um, you know, things are coming here. All right, so the data will have all of these things and then I've given the readme file here in order for you to uh, scaffold this, you know, how it is scaffolded. Uh, all of those informations are here, okay? So it's easy to do. So that's why I'm telling you to refer the previous video, but this, the whole application is required for you to move forward for the development career. And then, you know, in order for us to learn more things on the UI, the new angle UI, as well as the uh, Kubernetes and Docker Compose and much more uh, with respect to the Azure services. Now, service is very simple. It's like a relay handshake. It takes the request from the web, goes, talks to database, and then comes back with the data and send it back. So it's just a relay. We do not have much business logic as of this video. And later when we start using the Azure services, we will include many more uh, services here business logic here okay and then web is simple we have just three controllers address user activity and user profile they're all having their own endpoints and then we have a few more informations like in the middleware and uh, if you look at the middleware we will have uh, much more informations to process for example uh, we will be logging information we will also log the telemetrics we will also log the request and response in the app and such telemetry. This project also uses Serilog. So it's fully stacked to technology. And uh, that's it. So let me first go to configure project. In fact, we can run everything together. All right. So I'm going to start this. All the four applications will run. But here are the few important things uh, with respect to this project and another project. If you consider, okay, all the application that we just started is coming up. The first one is the user prop web. Okay, all of these has come up. And let's take a look at the products. So basically, if you look at these products, right, I've already explained in the database design. So basically, uh, in this product, what we are trying to do is, Okay, so in product, what we are doing is, if you take a look at the controller, I'll explain you from the controller, it will be easy for us to understand. So let's say somebody is trying to create a product, like basically an authorized user, okay? Now, there is a chance that we need to validate the models. The model is the product ID, name, and quality, quantity, all of those things, right? But here's the thing. How do we validate apart from the data annotation? If we have to check something in the database to see, um, you know, uh, for example, a product belongs to a particular category ID, whether the category ID is valid or not, how do you validate? You cannot do that in the data annotation. Instead, what we have done is we have added something called abstract validate object. That's a custom uh, abstract class that we added, and that's inheriting and implementing the I validatable object that's inbuilt. Okay, that's also coming from the data annotation I validatable object. Now this one has two methods, a synchronous and asynchronous validate method. So we are going to implement this. So how do we do it? So let's say we, we inherited this and this is inherited by another model called create product. So the create product is using this. So now what we can do is we can override this method and we can get the context here and we can talk to the servers through servers we can talk to the methods and in fact we are validating the incoming category against the database so the product microservice will have a custom validation that talks to database and validates see why do you need this we need this because we need to first upfront validate the incoming model before even it reaches the controller the way this is done for now today in the product microservices it will not reach the controller if the incoming model is not even valid okay that's why it is important to do that so that the controller is perfectly correct and 
easy free i would say if the model is correct you can close your eyes and literally execute the perfect code you don't need to do any validation here once the validation is uh, not successful it will return automatically a 400 bad request that certain things are not correct if everything is correct we directly add the product and product image everything here okay so this is one thing we can also use the automapper automapper is used in the the orders uh, microservice and uh, the cart microservice will have a different validation so it's a combination of so many things this this whole e-commerce uh, microservices so there are four microservices you go take a look if you have any questions let me know in the comment section i hope you enjoy this video I request you to go through complete code. It is there in the GitHub repository. And not only that, the database that you need is also uh, kept at the, uh, let's see where it is. So the database will be here. If I just open up this, you can see the complete database script here. Okay. So everything is included. I will put everything properly in the readme file. So you'll be able to read it and start this work. So once you have set up this four thing, we can deploy this to the Azure and start using important Azure servers here. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more tech tutorials. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified when we post new videos. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them in the comments below. Happy coding.